Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Another Sunday together. As you know, sometimes I like to start with a little joke. And these days I heard a story of a man that was actually uh, riding his bicycle across the zoo when he saw this little girl getting dangerously close to a lion's cage. Suddenly, the lion grabbed her backpack and was trying to pull her over into the cage to devour her. Wow, terrible situation. Well, the man jumps off his bike and runs towards them. He punches the lion's nose and the animal withdraws back to his cage. After that, the man took the little girl back to safety and was, you know, glad that he had the chance to, to do something about that terrible incident. Interestingly, you know, a journalist who was at the zoo and saw everything, he said to the man, Sir, this was the bravest thing I have ever seen. Well, the guy replied, you know, it was my duty. The lion was behind bars and I knew God would protect me just like he did with Daniel in the lion's cave. The reporter, you know, uh, made a funny face and said, oh, that is interesting. So, are you a Christian? I can see a, a Bible in your pocket. And the man replied, yes, yes, indeed, I am a Christian. Sir, I would like to write an article about you to publish in the tomorrow's paper, the journalist said. I will make sure your bravery and your faith will not go unnoticed. Well, the next day, the guy went to buy the paper first thing in the morning. And on the front page, he saw this article's title. Right wing Christian fundamentalist assaults African migrant and steals his lunch. <laughs> Sometimes the press is like that with us, isn't it? Anyway, let's pray and let's, you know, uh, receive a word in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name. Father, I just bless each one that is listening to this message right now. I just bless them with an open heart, Father, to receive from you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, today I would like to share with you about Look to the cross. We are in a series about look to Jesus. And today I would like you know, to challenge you to look to Jesus uh, through looking into the cross. And that is such a, a, an amazing thing, to be honest with you. Because when we focus our eyes on Jesus, I believe, you know, we position ourselves on a path of faith and not a path of fear. Amen? You know, we also need to understand that there is much more to know about Him. There is much more to get revelation on. Amen? You know, when we think about different ways to, to know more about someone, after having looked at and talked and listened, you know, to the person, face to face, another approach is to look at their work. That could be useful, you know. For instance, we can learn a lot about a painter by studying his paintings, by studying his masterpiece, I would say. So if you want to learn about, uh, let's say, I don't know, Michelangelo, well, you will probably need to study the Sistine Chapel, one of his uh, main uh, works. You know, therefore, if you want to learn about Jesus, if you want to focus our eyes on Jesus, another approach is to focus our eyes on his masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, the masterpiece of Jesus was not the, the miracles, astonishing miracles that he performed, you know, 
but not, not his amazing teaching. His masterpiece was the cross. Amen? The cross is the masterpiece of God. Because through the cross, he showed us justice and mercy at the same time. He showed us love and punishment, grace and severity. We need to understand. We need to understand the heart of God through the cross. And as you know, you know, the Bible says in uh, actually John, John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his own and only son that uh, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the heart of the Father. Amen. So, today I would like to, to invite you to look at a sort of a snapshot of the cross with me, if that's okay. You know, if we receive more revelation about the cross, about the achievements of the cross, we will be strengthened in our faith. Amen? And I believe that that's going to happen today with you. Today, you know, you will receive an impartation of faith through revelation of the finished work of the cross. Amen. I, I truly believe that and I pray that while you be listening to, to this message, you know, faith will rise in your heart. Amen. And actually, you know, I would like to share three uh, simple aspects of the cross with you. And the first one is the anguish of the cross. Okay, so let's read Isaiah uh, 53, verse 4, that says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. Whoa. You know, when all of this suffering came upon Jesus, he did not have people at his side at all. Rather, he was completely abandoned. If you remember, Judas betrayed him with a kiss, by the way. Peter denied him three times. Actually, you know, all the disciples left him and fled. And in the darkest hour of the history of the world, God the Father struck his own son with our punishment. That is the cross. But the fact is that the cross was planned by God the Father and embraced by God the Son. Jesus embraced the cross, embraced the pain. The pain. He chose it. You know, in other words, he lived in order to die, to be a substitute for us so that we might live. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible makes it clear that the cross was Jesus' choice. We can see that in, in a passage, actually in John uh, chapter 12, verse 27. I would like to read that one for you. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Hallelujah. So that was the heart of Jesus. Father, let your will be done. Father, glorify your name. Hallelujah. Are you willing to say that in your life? I hope so. You know, saying that the cross was Jesus' choice does not diminish its level of suffering. There was indeed anguish on the way to the cross. And this is so clear in so many places of the Bible. Actually, you know, we can see Jesus fighting against the will 
of the flesh. Yes, he was flesh and blood. And yes, he did uh, feel emotion, you know. If you remember the garden of Gethsemane, you know, he prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. But yet, not as I will, but as you will. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Not as I will, but as you will. You know, but when the hour had come and Peter tried to stop the will of the Father, you know, Jesus made it clear in Matthew 26, uh, 53 to 54. Do you think I cannot call on my Father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? Whoa. So, you know, on one hand, his soul was overwhelmed with sorrow at the Gethsemane garden. And on the other hand, the Bible says that he endured the cross by the joy set before him. Amen. You know, he also overpowered the sorrow of his suffering by fixing his eyes on the glory that was yet to come. Hallelujah. You know, this should be our attitude. We endure the suffering of this present age by looking to the glory that is yet to come. Amen. He indeed broke through, you know, with the anguish of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, the second thing that I would like to share with you about the cross is the forgiveness of the cross. The forgiveness of the cross. You know, the forgiveness achieved through the finished work of the cross is the, is the foundation of our faith. Amen. Because of the cross, we are saved by faith and not by works. Amen. At the cross, Jesus, as you know, canceled the record of charges against us. At the cross, he disarmed rulers and authorities once and for all. Amen. You know, I love a verse that is in Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Hallelujah for that. You know, the death of Jesus nullified the destructive effect of sin for all who put their trust in Christ. The weapon of soul-destroying sin and guilty is taken out of Satan's hand. Jesus, you know, disarmed the enemy of the single weapon that can condemn us, that is unforgiving sin. You know, we need to understand. We need to ask more and more revelation about the cross. Because, you know, through the cross, through the cross, we have not just received forgiveness. We have received freedom. We have received a new life. A new life. We receive the final victory against sin. You know, the cross is the masterpiece of God. Through the cross, Jesus destroyed the power of sin and death. The Bible says exactly that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 to 57. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Why? Why is sin the sting of death? Why? You know why? Because only unforgiving sin can condemn the soul and make death a door to hell and not to heaven. But now, by the blood of Christ, our sins are forgiven and Satan's soul-destroying power is nullified for all who are in Christ. You are in Christ Jesus, so there is no more condemnation for you. Amen. You know, it is incredible how since the beginning, the enemy has tried to distort the heart of God. But the heart of God is to save, not to condemn. Amen. You know, it's, isn't it amazing that one of the last things Jesus said at the cross was a word of forgiveness over his accusers? Do you remember? And he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Hallelujah. You know, that is the same heart that said to the adulterous woman, neither do I condemn you. Go now and live your life of sin. Amen. So, you know, every time, every time that you look to the cross, every time that you look to Jesus, every time that you focus on the right thing, you will find eyes of love and a heart willing to forgive. Amen. Remember that seeing Jesus is to focus on a path of forgiveness and not on a path of condemnation. He also, you know, teach us that with the measure that we measure people, we will be measured. So the more we focus our eyes on Jesus, the less we will criticize and the more we will encourage one another. Amen. So these days, more than ever before, let's focus our eyes on Jesus. Let's focus our eyes on the finished work of the cross. Amen. Let's ask for revelation of the achievements of the cross. Amen. Well, the third one that I would like to share with you is the mercies of the cross. And this point I would like to start reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 7. The Bible says, But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us, with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming age He might show the incomparable riches of His grace, expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Express His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, for this reason, Jesus Christ came to the world. Jesus is the mercy of the incarnate, you know, visible God. Hallelujah. This mercy that Jesus embodies is free of charge. This is not to say that there was not cost. Well, you know, Jesus paid the price at the cross with his own life. So we do not earn mercy, you know. We receive it as a free gift by faith and not by works. Hallelujah. The Bible says that He saved us according to His works, according to His mercy. Amen? And since, you know, Christ and the cross displays God's mercy, you know, we could actually see the mercy of God throughout the whole life of Jesus on earth. Every kind of need and pain was touched by the mercies of Jesus in his few years on earth. 
You know, when the blind beggar cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, many were embarrassed and indignant. But Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Your faith has made you well. You know, I don't know what is going on in your life today, but I would like to declare this word upon your life. Your faith will make you well. Amen. Hallelujah for that. You know, when, if you remember, when the revolting lepers raised their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and took pity on them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were all cleansed. Whoa, what a God of mercy. And, you know, talking about lepers, you know, maybe leprosy was the worst plague of that time. And Jesus did the unthinkable. <laughs> he healed, you know, another leper in another occasion by touching him, touching him. If you read that with me in Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 40 uh, says, A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knee, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Hallelujah. You know, these days, our standard of faith is so low that we can't even touch people with a flu virus. May, may the one that was willing to touch lepers encourage and give us boldness these days. In Jesus' name. You know, Jesus was merciful, not only with people who were suffering, but also with those who were living sinful lives. You know, when Jesus ate with, with tax collectors and sinners, you know, if you remember, the Pharisees criticized him. But the response of the Lord was not to fight back. Instead, he tried to open their eyes by telling them, Three parables to explain what he was doing. To explain that he came for the sick, not for the well. You know, he came for the lost. If you remember, one of these parables was about a prodigal son. Yes, a prodigal son. And if you remember of the parable, the climax of this story is a picture of God as a loving father that is running towards his lost son. We can read that in Luke 15, 20. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in other words, Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners because he was the incarnate display of the Father's tender compassion for sinners. Amen. You know, the cross is the masterpiece of mercy. It is the masterpiece of Christ. To look to Jesus is to look to eyes of mercy. You know, I remember when Jesus met the rich young man. Even with the, the wrong religious attitude of that young man, the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. Unfortunately, as you might know, the young rich man despised the eyes of mercy of the Lord. You know, if you are here today, if you are listening to this message, I believe that this it is because one day he also looked at you with eyes of mercy. And by the grace of God, you looked back. Amen. You looked into Jesus. And the challenge now is first and foremost, you know, to keep your eyes on him. 
but also the challenge is to reflect His mercy towards others. It is not by chance that the Bible calls us ministers of reconciliation, as we are indeed. We have received mercy to be channels of mercy. Amen. You know, the enemy tries to deceive us and make us, you know, judgmental people who will be channels of condemnation. But our God did not send Jesus to the world to condemn people. He sent him to save people. Amen. God also sent us to be channels of salvation and not channels of condemnation. Channels of mercy, channels of grace, ambassadors of peace. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says actually in a passage in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. You know, these days we have been praying, praying for people to be saved. And I would like to call to your attention that in the middle of this crisis, it's time for us to go for the harvest. Amen. Amen. Times of crisis throughout history were the most fruitful seasons for the church. Do you know that? So I believe that more than ever before in our lifetime, we as Christians have a huge Opportunity, huge opportunity. It's time for salvation. It's time to focus our eyes on Jesus. It's time to fulfill the Great Commission. It's time to take possession of the achievements of the cross. It's time to believe that the gospel is indeed the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Let me pray. Let me bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I, I just bless each one that is watching this message right now. Father, I just declare upon them the grace of the Lord. Father, I declare upon them that these days they will be channels of salvation, that they will be willing to, to evangelize, to invite people to an evangelistic event. Father, that they will be willing to be light among darkness, Lord. I bless them with more and more revelation of the cross. I bless them to keep their eyes on Jesus and thrive in the middle of this crisis through faith and faith alone. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed. Amen. I hope you were as blessed as I was by the word today. If you're watching for the first time, a very warm welcome to you. And if you're sitting at your home today and you just have such a hunger building up inside of you, with everything going on right now, you just feel completely overwhelmed and you just need a fresh anointing. You just need to more of Jesus in your life. I just want to encourage you to access the link on the screen that you can see where you'll be able to register your details so we can help you connect with the church here in Swindon. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed.